it's March, which means we get to meet a new grain for our Grains Explorer Challenge. And this month, it is all about rice, a really big topic. Hey y'all, welcome back. My name is Felicia and this is Grains and Great, where we talk all about real whole grains from a biblical perspective. As stated, this is another video in our Grains Explorer, Explorer Challenge that we are doing for 2024. And I can't believe we're already in March. <laughs> this year's already going by so fast. How this works, real quick, Grains Explorer Challenge. Anyone can participate. Um, every month here on YouTube, I will be starting the month introducing the grain that we will be working with for that month. We are challenging ourselves to explore new grains beyond our comfort zone. Now for the full adventure, be sure to be a part of the Grainy Bunch where they get exclusive videos and recipes to go even deeper with this challenge. So if you wanna catch up, we got a playlist for you with everything for 2024 with the Grains Explorer Challenge and to check out more and to sign it for the Grainy Bunch, just go to grainsandgrit.com slash grains explorer. All right, now this month is rice and there's a lot to cover. So buckle up buttercup and you may want a pen and paper to take some notes. So as always, what we're gonna be covering is a general overview and history of rice, the nutritional benefits, what rice is used for, types of rice you can find, how to use rice in your kitchen, and a bonus this time, tips for storing it. First up, a general overview and history of rice. So archeologists are a little unsure of where rice originated, but many historians believe that rice was first grown as far back as 5,000 years ago, which pretty much matches up with the Bible because that would be shortly after Noah's blood. The first recorded mention of rice is from China. Shocker, I know. The Chinese emperor Shen Nung, forgive me for slaughtering that pronunciation, realized the importance of rice. And he began to honor the grain by establishing annual rice ceremonies to be held at sowing time and the emperor would plant the first seeds. Rice is actually still celebrated in China today in the three-day honey rice festival that's held in October. Yunnan, China is the homeland of rice to the Chinese nation and is known as the source of rice culture throughout the whole world. So although scientists cannot identify whether China, India, or Thailand were the original home of rice, I personally think it was native to all of it, we can confirm that it originates from Asia. Now, fun fact, it is easier to determine when it was introduced to Europe and the Americas thanks to all the many travelers and explorers, all the things. So some believe that it actually traveled to America in 1694 on a British ship, that was bound for Madagascar and they were blown off course. They needed repairs. And so they ended up in Charleston, South Carolina. The colonists helped repair. And in exchange, Captain James Thurber presented them with a quantity of rice seed. Unfortunately, the British completely messed this up thanks to the American Revolution. Uh, the British, when they were occupying Charleston, South Carolina, they then took all of the rice, every grain left nothing for seed. So there was no more seed for the next year's crop. Thankfully, President Thomas Jefferson decided to illegally smuggle some out of Italy in the late 18th century. And then it transplanted, transplanted from the Carolinas to the southern states surrounding the Mississippi Basin. So thank you, President Jefferson, for breaking Italian law. Yeah. Now, obviously we have cultural significance to rice. It is often associated with prosperity and a lot of folklore and legends surround the grain. So in Japan, rice has its own patron god, Inari, I think is how you say it. And in Indonesia, its own goddess, the Dewey Sri, Sri, again, bad pronunciation. Now, rice is also linked to fertility, and that is why we have a tradition of throwing rice at a newly wedded couple. And in India, rice is generally the first food that a, that a bride presents to her husband to ensure fertility in the marriage. And children are given rice as their first solid food. And then this one's my favorite because according to good old Cajun folklore, the test of a true Cajun is whether they can calculate the precise quantity of gravy needed to accompany a crop of rice grown out in the fields. God bless the Cajuns. Okay, so some tips about where rice can be grown in case you feel like planting your own rice. 
it's actually not diverse of a grain. Uh, many grains can be planted can be planted in rolling hills and the diversity of the land. Rice actually needs very flat land. It requires immense quantities of water in its early days, followed by a long and uninterrupted season of hot and dry weather. And farmers need to be able to drain and re-wet their fields regularly. And that's why rice fields are flat. So rice in the world today. Fourth, it is the fourth most produced crop and it follows after sugarcane, maize, and wheat. Only 8% of rice is actually traded internationally. China, India, and Indonesia are the largest consumers of rice. China and India combined produce 52% of the world's rice. And China is the number one producer, followed by India, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Vietnam, and then Thailand. And just those five consist of 90% of the world's production of rice. Now, in the United States, about 20 billion pounds of rice are produced annually. And the main states for this are Arkansas, California, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, and Texas. And half of their crop actually stays right here in the United States. And it actually accounts for 80% of the rice that we consume here in the United States. The other half is exported to over 120 countries. The complete genome of rice was actually sequenced in 2005, which can lead to genetic modification. But it actually was the very first crop to have their entire genome sequenced out. Okay, that was a lot. Second up, nutritional benefits of rice. Now, like wheat, it depends on the type that you were eating, which we will get into later. But rice overall contains 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including folic acid, B vitamins, potassium, magnesium, selenium, fiber, iron, and zinc. It is gluten-free and actually the least allergenic of all the grains. And if in its whole grain form, like brown rice, just like many grains, have been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease, diabetes, and certain cancers. Also lowers the risk of high blood pressure. It is nutrient-dense and a complex carb, which means that the body slowly digests it. Next up, what rice is used for? Obviously, eating. Rice is used for eating. <laughs> it is especially needed in a lot of Asian and Middle Eastern cuisine. Then you also have things like rice noodles, rice flour. It's used in breakfast cereal and in alcoholic beverages like the Japanese sake. Sake? Sake. Sake. You know what I mean. Now, other useful uses of rice, many of y'all know it dries out your electronics. You can use them as heat compresses. It unclogs your salt shakers. It sharpens the blades in your blender. It cleans your coffee grinders and, as you know, our grain mills. Now, the big topic, types of rice. In holy moly, there are a lot. I will be flashing them up here on the screen. We're going to get through them fast. First up, Arborio rice, and I think I pronounced that right. Arborio rice, it's a medium grain, wider in size, characteristic white dot at the center. It is named after the town of Arborio in the Po Valley of Italy, where it's grown. Due to its high starch content, it's slightly chewy and sticky consistency. It develops a cream texture when cooked and is used for risotto, rice pudding, and soup. Second up, basmati rice. When cooked, grains are long, dry, and separate. It has a nutty aroma and flavor. It is common in India and Asian cuisine, but can be used in many recipes. Used for dal, curry, pilafs, and saffron rice. Number three, black rice. Yep, there's, that's a thing. It is also known as the forbidden rice. It is a long, medium, or short grain. Same antioxidant that's found in blueberries and blackberries. It has a mild, nutty, earthy flavor. It's used in Chinese cuisine for its health permitting properties, and it's used for bowls, rice pudding, soups, rice salads, and Chinese black rice cake. Number four, bomba rice, which I've actually never heard of. It's a short grain. It's cultivated in the Valencia region of Spain. It has a firm texture, perfect for Spanish paella. Paella? Pa paella? You know what I mean. Needs more liquid to absorb when cooking than other varieties. Mild flavor absorbs the flavor and aroma of the stock and spices cooked with, and it's used for paella, Mediterranean dishes, and risotto. Number five, one that we all know of, brown rice. And this is specifically what we will be focusing on for the Grains Explorer Challenge. 
It is the whole grain of rice that has the bran and the germ layers intact. It has a firmer texture, nuttier flavor, provides more fiber, vitamins, and minerals per serving. It comes in long, medium, or short grains, and it's used for everything. Stuffing, bowls, casseroles, stir fries, rice pilaf, etc. Number six, jasmine rice. It is from Thailand, brings exotic flair, pleasant floral aroma, and it's very nutty. Moist, soft texture when cooked. It's a long grain and it's used in curry, stir fry dishes, and all Thai dishes. I can tell you that from experience and other Asian dishes as well. Number seven, also one of the most common ones is long grain white rice. It's the most common rice used in American recipes. Also popular in Asian Mexican cuisine. Compared to brown rice, has a mild flavor. Lighter, fluffier texture when cooked also takes less time than brown rice, as we all know. Now, it does have a lower nutritional content due to its milling process because it's had that German bran removed. And again, it's used for everything just like brown rice. Then we have parboiled rice. Rice that has been partially boiled in its edible outer husk. It improves texture of the rice and cuts down on cooking time. And it saves some of the original vitamins and, and minerals. And it's technically a cooking math method rather than a variety, but you can buy it in long, medium, or short grain. It has a mild, nutty flavor. And again, it's used for everything that brown and white rice are used for. Number nine, sticky rice, also known as glutinous rice or sweet rice. Long grain white rice has a low starch content, causes it to have an extremely sticky texture when steamed, grown mainly in Southeast and East Asia, has a mild flavor, and it's used for dumplings, desserts, rice balls, and stuffing. Number 10, sushi rice. Technically a short grain white or brown rice that has a soft, tender, and very sticky texture. And it made and it's made by combining short grain white or brown rice with sugar, salt, and vinegar. Oftentimes, short grain white or brown rice will be labeled as sushi rice to show its ideal uses for sushi as a mild flavor and it's used for, you guessed it, sushi, rice balls, poke balls, poke balls, and sushi burritos. All right, number 11, wild rice. Shocker, it's technically not a rice. It actually comes from seeds harvested from four types of semi-aquatic grasses that are native to North America. It's a long grain, more pronounced, earthy, and nutty flavor and firm texture. It can be used similar to white or brown rice, but with longer cooking time. And it's used in soups, casseroles, and rice pilafs. Number 12, yellow rice. Also a way of cooking on an actual rice that's grown. Yellow rice is not actually grown. The long grain white rice that is flavored and turned yellow with the addition of saffron and turmeric. It's popular in many different cuisines, including South and Central American, South African, Indian, and Asian cuisines. And number 13, polished rice. Another name for white or milled rice that has been milled to remove the hux, bran, and germ. It is the least nutritional value, obviously. Okay, so those are all the different varieties that I could come up with. Now let's actually talk about the difference between long, medium, and short grain. First of all, what we mean by that, it's referring to the shape of the grain. Long grain rice has a longer cylindrical shape. Short grain rice will have shorter and wider shape. So let's talk about long grain rice. It is at least three to four times as long as it is wide. It's a light and fluffy texture that separates when cooked, key thing there, and it's commonly used to make bowls, pilafs, casseroles, and stir, stir fries. Then you have medium grain. It is shorter and wider than long grain, chewy, tender, and slightly sticky texture when cooked, commonly used to make risotto, paella, and side dishes. And then last but not least, the short grain. Less than twice as long as it is wide, soft, tender, and sticky texture when cooked. This is what's commonly used to make sushi, poke balls, or poke ball, bowls, and rice balls. Oh, there we did it. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about how to use it in your kitchen. So again, with the grains of spore challenge, we'll be focusing on brown rice or really any whole grain rice if I have just forgotten to mention it. But bottom line, we do whole grains here, y'all. No white rice here. No white rice. Mm -mm, not doing it. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about why rinse rice. If you read many recipes, they tell you to rinse your rice. And there are a couple reasons for this. One, that actually helps remove any pesticides that were left over. So this is definitely important if you're not buying organic rice. But two, it actually gets rid of excess starch, which can help it, you know, be softer or stickier, things like that. Now, some people will say like on the package to not 
wash the rice. That is because they will say it's been enriched with water soluble vitamins and minerals. But again, enriched, if you're using a whole grain, it's not being enriched. So you, there should not be a reason to not wash your rice because you should be using a whole grain. There you go. Now, how to cook brown rice. I know for years I couldn't get it right. It will save my life. I got white rice down, but couldn't get um, the brown rice down. And I didn't have a rice cooker or an Instant Pot like I do now. I had to figure out how to learn it on, do it on the stove. The technique that I found that works best is actually like the pasta method where you dump your rice in a pot and you fill it up with water like you're doing pasta. Then you bring, you add some salt to it. You bring it up to a bowl and then you let it, when it comes to a bowl, then you let it simmer for about 45 to 50 minutes until the rice is done. And then you drain the rice, not completely, but mostly drained. And then you put a lid on it. Keep it off of the burner. Um, don't, you're not cooking anymore, but you want the lid on it to steam it for a good 15 to 20 minutes. And that worked, my friend. Then of course, if you're like me, you have an instant pot, easy peasy way to make rice. So with brown rice, one cup of rice, one and a quarter cups of water or stock, either one is fine, 20 minutes on high. It's pretty simple. Now I usually double mine. This is an eight quart instant pot and I usually double that batch. And so when I double it, I found for me for the two cups of brown rice, um, that 35 minutes seems to be the sweet spot for me. And then I let it release naturally or at least let it steam naturally for about 15 to 20 minutes and then you can release it. And for me, that comes out nice, fluffy brown rice every single time. Now what to use rice for and basically anything anything. You've got rice and beans. If you're making gumbo, you need some rice. So many Mexican foods and Hispanic foods um, need rice with that. You can throw it into soups. You know, Any Asian cuisine, you got your fried rice, side dishes if seasoned well. I mean, really, what, what can you not use rice for? I mean, really. Okay, now the bonus time, how to store rice. I know I've talked about how to store grains for forever. So I've done a little bit of research about this because there's a bit of controversy when it comes to rice and things that you need to know about. And I'm also going to share you what I've dealt with personally. Now you have seen that usually whenever I'm storing rice, I like to buy it in bulk. And even with my brown rice, I usually do like to freeze it. And then after freezing it for about 24 to 48 hours, I just take it and I dump it into a bucket with a good lid um, to keep all bugs and moisture out. And I honestly, they're in my shed and I haven't had a problem. And I've even had some long-term. I personally have not had a problem, but according to the the web, the interwebs, um, here's what they say about storing it. Now, if you do not want to freeze or you cannot freeze rice, um, throw in oxygen absorbers and just make sure you have enough for the size container that you have to make sure no bugs or anything like that hatch. So that's definitely a good thing. But if you are wanting to store long term, um, they actually state that white rice is better for the long term because brown rice has the bran layer on the outside, which also contains a lot of oils. And so they state that after six months of storage, that brown rice can go rancid. Again, I personally have not had that happen. But be that as it may. So here's what I would do. I really don't want to store, like if you're a prepper and you want to store rice, I really don't want to store white rice. So I do recommend, first of all, rotating your grains always. So just use it and rotate it, buy what you want, and then just make sure that you rotate it so it doesn't go bad. Um, but if you want it to kind of just sit there, um, I would probably do the freeze method, freeze it. I would put it in mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. And then in a good container, like a bucket with a good lid, all to be safe. And I think for that, that would probably last longer. I do not know how much longer. If you go to Wallaby Goods for their Mylar bags and oxygen absorbers, I do have a coupon code for y'all. I'll list that here in the link down in the description box. Um, I think they tell you about brown rice. So that's something to consider with rice. Again, I haven't had a problem. Duh. I haven't kept it for 30 years. But just personal thing for me, and I'm here in Florida where it's very hot, it's very humid, and it's in my shed, which is not air conditioned in the slightest, and and it's been fine. Now, do you know one thing about rice is rice does absorb the smells and the flavors of wherever it is. So make sure if you're storing it in a bucket, that it's a food grade safe bucket. 
So it's not absorbing any sort of chemicals or any weird smells or anything like that. Okay, we did it. We did it. I covered it. Oh my word, that was a lot of information. So again, I hope y'all are enjoying this Grains Explorer Challenge. Be sure to check up here. This is the playlist to be catching up with whatever we've been doing in 2024, depending on whenever you see this video. And again, um, if you want to join the full adventure, be sure to join us over on the Grainy Bunch. They're my diehard grainies. You know I love you. Grainsofgrit.com slash Grains Explorer for all the details. And enjoy rice. Let me know what you're making with rice this month. And as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day. See you next week. Bye.